little vinyl community. Just about ready to call it a day, but I thought I'd try to do a quick video. Uh, I was thinking about a band today while I was in the car driving for work, and uh, just was in the mood to talk a little bit about a band. In the meantime, I was doing a little reading tonight. If you're not familiar with this, it's um, about the Bosnian War in the 1990s. Something that I think a lot of people have forgotten about, particularly in America. This was um, almost an afterthought. And a lot of um, pain and suffering was inflicted in this region of the world under the guise of, of uh, trying to uh, save the day and uh, bring democracy to the world. Um, it's done in a kind of unique illustrated style, a style I think some people would call a cartoon style. This is not a cartoon book. This is a very serious book about a very serious topic. And, um, but I think it does a good job in explaining who, who the victims in this war were and, um, and the mistakes that were made in this war um, and how we seem to make those mistakes over and over again. And um, almost to the point of wondering whether those mistakes aren't uh, completely intentional. So, um, also, um, if you hear music in the background, listening to one of my favorite electronic music albums, it's a great record and it's aged really, really well. Loop Finding Jazz Records. So, if you haven't heard this, this is um, it's a wonderful record. Very, very, um, how can you put it? I mean, in a way, this album is almost spiritual to me. It's got a beautiful um, feel to it. And um, it also provides lots of opportunity to, to think. And uh, probably the perfect accompaniment for, for reading. Um, the band that I wanted to talk about today was... Uh, band from the 70s called Suicide. This album came out in 1977 and um, this is actually not an, not an original nor is it what the original cover looks like. I, um, I bought this album years ago without knowing that there was a different cover and in fact the track listing was a little different. That is a first American repress and what they did is they took one track off of it and they put three live tracks on. By the time I discovered that, that was the way that I uh, wanted to hear the album. And as many times as I've heard it, this will always be uh, suicide for me. Uh, Martin Rev, Alan Vega, uh, two sometimes homeless artists, musicians from New York, got together out of a love of, um, of 50s era rock and roll. Think like um, Elvis Presley, Jerry Lee Lewis, Little Richard, um, those kind of sounds. And came up with the idea of mixing that together with um, kind of harsh, cold electronic sounds. And um, with the direct idea of using that sound um, in a confrontational way. In fact, I think confrontation is the pivotal word when we're talking about uh, suicide. Their music um, rode the line between being a music act and uh, a performance art when they were live. The band using the live performance to, in many cases, attack the audience members with um, harsh electronic sound and also directly, um, either verbally and sometimes even physically. And the result was often near riots or, or riots with the audiences getting angry and rebelling 
over the performance that they were seeing in front of them. Interestingly enough, on these early gigs, um, the band member was prone to handing the microphone over to audience members and allowing the audience members to confront them back. And you know, all of which kind of begs the question, why? Why would they, why would they want to do that? And it's the idea that um, when you, how do you wake up a society of people who have fallen into a kind of consumer driven complacency um, where they fail to see um, the world as it really is around them? You know, um, it's the idea that maybe we've gotten used to things that we shouldn't be getting used to. And I'll use the example. Um, today I saw, um, as I drove through the city here, um, on every street corner you drive by, there are homeless men and women of all ages um, begging for, for money, for food, for help. Um, there is no place for them to go. In the United States, we have very, very few mental health facilities. Um, there, are, there are two places that people can end up going when they've, when they've run out of money. They can get on the streets or they can go to jail. And that is, the, um, that is our privatized system of taking care of people. But I regress by saying all that. Um, what suicide wanted to do was wake people up from the complacency that we, we've fallen into and see the, the human suffering, not only domestically, homelessness, but also related to the things that we, we do around the world and wake up to those things too. So this idea of confrontation was was absolutely pivotal to, to suicide's music. And you know, a lot of people will point towards um, um, Never Mind the Bollocks as a kind of dividing line in music where, you know, everything that was before it sounded old and everything that came after it was affected by, by the sound of it. And I, and I, I see that, um, but I think maybe a better example of that is actually suicide. That this might not be on everybody's tongues all the time, but that it was this record that was really a dividing line. Um, suicide's music's been called a lot of different things. Um, but the band members themselves on early um, posters that they used actually called their music punk rock. And even though this is not necessarily what we think of as punk, that we probably think of The Damned or, uh, you know, uh, uh, The Heartbreakers or something like that as, as punk, um, but the attitude and the confrontation of this music is really what punk rock music um, was all about, which I think is the reason that this album, and then you know, combining those elements the way they did with uh, more contemporary sounds of, of electronic, um, using, mixing the, the old and the new together um, in a completely different way than anyone had done before, makes this a completely unique listen. Um, there's a track on here, Frankie Teardrops, which is a, like a 10 minute long track. It tells the story of, of, um, of urban blight and of, of homelessness and of human suffering. And um, if you haven't ever heard the track, you really owe yourself the uh, opportunity to hear it. Um, this is an album that has aged. Um, while the music sometimes, some of the synth sounds can sound a little bit dated, um, the power 
of this of this recording has not diminished at all. And as I drove around in the car, in the car today, listening to tracks from it, I was just struck at how vital um, and how meaningful the confrontations of, of suicide remained. Um, just mention too that um, a lot of people have gone on and, and covered covered some of these songs. Of Brad, um, Bruce Springsteen does a, a suicide cover. Um, I prefer the suicide version, but you you have to you have to give it to him for um, for recognizing the importance of of the band. Anyway, um, I hope in the future we can do a little overview of of some of the other suicide records that came after this and also some of the solo work for the band members, all of which is, is interesting music. Even some of the later suicide records are, um, are definitely worth, worth listening to. So uh, with that, we'll say uh, good night, BC, and uh, hope, you, uh, hope you enjoyed our little suicide overview. Thank you.